So to let you guys know, because I think it leaked on Reddit because it said coming in February, we're not quite ready to have the Carrick in the, in the initial 3.8 release, but it will be in a subsequent 3.8 release. So it's not waiting till 3.9. So I think in February we'll, it should be done, and that's mostly because we still have uh, some sort of LED stuff to do and some damage stuff and some of the finishing touches of the tech stuff. Uh, all right, so uh, let's get dressed. Get dressed, put a jacket on. So it's the beginning of, we, we're still working on some of our, uh, but ultimately we're gonna, there'll be a lot more sort of physical inventory and in what you're gonna use and you'll sort of see that, why it comes into effect later on in the demo. Uh, and uh, let's just do a little bit of a tour, maybe go off to the mess grab a morning, a bit of morning coffee. Here's a cool table. We are bored on a long journey, exploring the frontiers. There's a mess on the other side of the, uh, the living quarters. And then the window maybe. Yeah, we can't see the plan out no, it's there, right? It's on, it's on the other side. All right, let's have a little cup of coffee. So we had coffee in the last last Citizen Con demo. So yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> again, this this plays towards our actor status, which we'll get into a little bit later, where you will have to eat, you will have to drink stuff to stay alive. Again, we're not trying to make it so that you have to do it every hour or anything like that, but it is part of survival. Oh. Whoops. J just move. This is one of our other players, Joe, on the Carrick. Uh, Has the point ever gone down again? Yeah. Really? Okay. Uh, so Joe was actually, uh, Phil, can you switch to just have the comms? That, sorry, uh, 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 the, the back end services that does the point VoIP seems to be sticky here. It was on in our previous, and then it went off, and then it's gone on again. So here's Sam. So uh, her voice, her voice isn't working either. Well, no, so for the point servers are down. Yeah, so, so which I don't know. They were working. We we span it just before you guys came in. It worked. Yeah. Now it's down. It was off the other time. So, so basically, uh, she will be sharing a mission with us, and then at that point in time, Gwen will go meet a contact um, on the planet. So at three seven. We, we introduced mission sharing, and um, obviously we still have some group work to do to make things feel fluid and getting in and out of parties and all of that. But basically, this is another step into making sure that, you know, it. we want people to play together, um, or we want the players to at least have the ability, or if they have the desire to play together, yeah. to, to do uh, it very quickly. And this is, a, this is a mission to go down onto, down to Microtech, which is the first time we're gonna go down there, and, uh, visit part of it and uh, steal a uh, software encryption algorithm. So it's not just Silicon Valley, it's also here in Star Citizen space. Uh, the encryption of algorithms are very important. Um, so we're getting that from Twitch. So uh, Glenn will accept that and let's head down. And what's, what's already happened is uh, Sam has sent one of our other players down to go and get uh, a couple of items that you would need for the mission, which is a scientist outfit and a key card. So uh, Glenn is now gonna go into the Carrick, uh, into the Pisces, sorry, and head down to Microtech. So we're gonna keep the Carrick up in order and we're gonna go down to uh, New Babbage on Microtech. So, as you start seeing here, we are rolling out 
the new building blocks in the UI. Um, this has been a, a, a large initiative on our team to uh, basically empower our developers to actually uh, use it um, when they're banking things. Uh, so, and versus it, it being bottlenecked by our, our previous uh, smaller UI team. All right, that's the upper bridge in the Carrick, and uh, uh, see that. And through there, I think, is the drone room down on the left-hand side, I believe. Yep. Uh, and here is the uh, Carrick Hangar Bay, I mean the Pisces Hangar Bay. back there's the two rear turrets and then also the engine room here which is uh, another one of our players so Glenn's going to ask him to open the hangar for him when he gets into the Pisces but of course since our um, back-end VoIP service decided to die and our back-end stuff <laughs> just imagine it being said and we can take it's not a bad idea to take a port could come in handy later in the mission. All right, let's go into Pisces, Glenn. Pisces. Joe's going to come with us so he can take the, uh, he'll take the ship uh, back to the, to the Carrick after we've uh, got down there and they'll rendezvous and meet with us later. on uh, my screen left, please. Okay. All right, yeah. No, I need player one in the main screen. Player two screen left it was, but I think we're a little slow on our things. Um, okay. Back to player one. Can I get player one back on the main screen, please? <laughs> player one, main screen, thank you. Okay, that's player one on the screen right, main screen, please. <laughs> Sorry about this, we had this going before, I don't know what's happening. Okay, there we go, all right, Glenn. Can you put, uh, let's go exterior and then also get your landing gear back up. You can see our pretty landing gear going up. Go underneath it. Okay, well, you, okay, that's fine. That's fine. All right. And uh, let's set a course to um, Microtech. Can I switch to have uh, player three on the screen to the right, the very right screen? Player three, please.
red screen is. Player three, right screen. Okay, then kill, kill the right screen. Kill the right screen, please. The very right screen. Uh, okay, here we are. Uh, coming out. No. I know. Player one, the center screen. Player one should be the center screen. This whole demo, please. Okay. So we introduced. We introduced space stations around orbit, around the planets. Uh, they will have HABs and basically other shops and all of that. So um, that will roll out with 3.8. So every planet, Lorville, Art Corp, Microtech, and then obviously we have Port Alisar. Yeah, and this is Port Tresla, which is the orbital station around Microtech. And as we're going to descend down to Microtech, I want to bring Ian onto the stage. Ian Leland is our art director of uh, the Persistent Universe. <laughs> and so one, one of the big things that we're rolling out uh, with 3.8 is Procedural Planet Tech V4, which is pretty amazing. And uh, Ian, I want you to start talking about it. OK. Hi, everyone. So Planet Tech V4, this has been a major tech initiative for CIG. Uh, it's something that we felt very passionate about working on and some very, very clever people have been working on it. Fundamentally, previously, we couldn't have done a planet like this before, so we're really excited to kind of put it on screen today. One of the first things that you'll see is now we have what we're calling large-scale terrain shadows. So what this means is, even from space, you you'll see terrain formations like a mountain cast like long, beautiful shadows across the landscape. And, over the top, you know, and because like microtech is largely about. snow, this is kind of important, right? Another principle of V4 is we want to dramatically reduce the amount of biome tiling. So what we want to do is, is it should be a one-to-one. -one. So what you see in space is what you see on ground. The type of hopping, crossfading, we, we want to get rid of that com completely, so it should be a seamless transition. Also, here, we knew it was going to do a cold planet. We thought it'd be really good to have a frozen ocean. So this was a brand new shader that we put into development. And what we have right now is it's physicalized, so we can walk and drive on it. Yeah. Internally, we're just in love with this technology. It empowers the art team to be able to just create amazing artwork. Yeah. So one of the things that we've added is, is basically, uh, and this will tie again into the actor system that we show off later, but the planet, we, we call it the room system, basically. And the room system allows us to have humidity. But it could be a planet system. Yes, or it, but it's a planet a system. Basically an environment yes. uh, container. So it allows us to do precipitation now or humidity based. And it's all systemic. So if it's a humid planet, then you'll get precipitation on the cockpit or on your visor. Or yeah, and it, it will also affect things like the contrails and the effects. Yeah. And it's all tied in, uh, which later on today we'll show more of. Uh, the other thing uh, that we can talk about other than how beautiful uh, Prot Planet V4 looks, also the fact that, like, I don't know if you noticed, but it's like you don't see repetition of biomes. You don't see, I mean, it just seamlessly from the outside in. It's just smooth. It's pretty awesome. There's some talks today that will talk about the graphics tech behind it and also yep. just how they created the stuff. Um, and as we're flying here, a couple. Of, one other thing I want to point out, which is not necessarily the Planet Tech V4, but it's uh, we've been sort of working on the flight experience, uh, and that's an ongoing project for the combat and the flight experience. But one thing that we'll roll out in 3.8 is what we call uh, the look-ahead uh, setup for the cockpit. So if Glenn is flying around here, what we do is we actually take notice of where the velocity vector of the ship is going to be, where the horizon line, if you're on a planetary body, if it's space, obviously you wouldn't worry about that. And also if you had a selected target, and 
the view uh, basically gets uh, sort of biased towards that. And so as you're flying around, you'll feel the cockpit move around you. And it's quite similar if you see people fly, like Tarada does you know, really cool flying and he's got head tracking on, right? And you can see pilots generally look where they're going. And also if you're a racing car driver, you look where you're going. And so that's kind of the idea here, rather than having a very static fixed view. You can, of course, turn it off if you don't like it, but we think it gives a much more fluid experience. We've also been working on the uh, chase camera stuff, so there'll be more fluid vehicle chase camera. You'll see it here, you'll see it a bit later on. Uh, and and uh, generally that's sort of stuff that we're continually um, working on. But here we are, we're kind of coming up to the new Babbage. I'll give new it Babbage. to you, Ian. Also another thing which is super interesting A lot of love went into these pine trees. We have a lot of pine trees. We have a lot of very good artists working on them. But the objects are being distributed and being informed by the terrain. So if you actually look at where those pine trees are, they're distributing real time. Previously, we were doing pre-baked maths. And that's where you see these pine trees being distributed into the valleys. Very interesting. Also, another interesting thing is this planet data is also being utilized for things like gate logic, VFX, things like that. Yeah, well, the, the VFX is determined by the biome and the environmental data, so you'll get mists rolling over mountains, Correct. depending on the atmosphere and, and the biome data. So it's all very procedural. Okay, so we're coming into the outer districts of New Babbage here. One of the most important things we did when we started this landing zone is we wanted to learn from the experiences created in Louisville, Area 18. So as we fly over, we wanted to remove these big walls we had to previously build around these landing zones. So when you look down there, you can land there. A lot of you asked me previously, is like, why can't we land there? So that's been a huge initiative. Yeah. We're also, we're also for 3A significantly improving the no-fly zone and how yeah. you visualize into it so we won't have like this big ugly mesh that just gets in the way and, and blows you up. So I think that will help in most locations. But yeah, you can definitely see the sort of learning that's gone over multiple landing zones uh, coming to fruition in New Babbage, which to me feels like probably the best of our sort of cityscape so far. Yes, we're very proud of it internally. Here you can see one of the signature buildings of New Babbage. This is what we're calling the Aspire Grand. Good job, Glenn. See if we can get through there. Uh, fancy dancy. <laughs> one interesting. And the Aspire Grand is probably where, if you were starting in on New Babbage, it'd yes. be one of the places you would have your hab. I've got a slide to show you later on today. What the view out of that's where the hab's going to be. So if you want your home base or your land, your uh, hab to be on New Babbage. That's where it's going to be. Yeah, and we, we will not necessarily with 3.8, but we're going to start tr transitioning next year towards having people start on the various planets versus start on Port Olisar. So you sort of will choose your home base, whether it would be Hurston or Microtech or Crusader um, you know, or Area or um, Arcor. And then that would be sort of your starting base in terms of playing the game. And we also understand that you want to get in and out very quickly. so. Again, that's why we're putting HABs in the space station's round, so then you can stay there, you can get in and out very quickly. Oh yeah, no, I was, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in spaceports, we will like have uh, like uh, like motels in airports. We'll have that as an option when you land or not, and then also you can have a more, your sort of permanent apartment in the city, so yep. to speak, and you just pick where it is. So uh, I think we're gonna be, we're just heading now to uh, the kind of new Babbage, uh, interstellar spaceport, uh, which is actually not, uh, it's across the frozen lake. Or it's ocean. across the lake. One yeah. interesting thing is when we were designing New Babbage is we actually scouted, geographically scouted, where they would build a landing zone. So we built it around this nice water feature. Oh, 
Yeah, she's greeting you. Okay, right. Right. And this is pretty. I mean, new, the new Babbage spaceport has a lot of uh, hangars and. It has twice the capacity of previous spaceports. And Chris laid down the challenge, said, Ian, let's let's try building a spaceport in the side of a mountain. And we were like, okay, Chris, let's <laughs> let's give it a try. Oh, and it's sharp, there's nice Microsoft miners. We've been working on our comms calls uh, internally to get what we would consider a gold standard on that. And then we will slowly roll that out to every every AI. Yeah, yeah, and then we still, uh, yeah, uh, we still have a little on the interaction in terms of requesting it and stuff like that. But yeah, let's head in. Come on, Glenn. You can do it. See the AI, and this is just a small landing pad, right? This is a small. This is only a small one, just to let you guys know. I think we have small, medium, large, and extra, extra large. large. So yeah. that's just to give you an idea of scale, which I think one of the things that's great with Star Citizen is just that level of scale that can go from, you know, a coffee cup all the way up to a planet. Find Rob, who's gone ahead of time and got us, got us a uh, Microtech Science coat and a fake ID. It's just like going out drinking when you're 16. <laughs> that was I never did that. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, just one, one thing to note on 3.8. So, micro, so. New I'm not sure I mentioned this, but Microtech yeah. will be there. Um, and actually, when we roll out V4, we had to redo every single planet and every single moon. So we did that actually in two months, yes. which is a testimony of how quicker the workflow is. So not only is the quality better, but the workflow is much better because we basically redid everything that took us about two years and two months, uh, which is a really good sign for the future and creating uh, more content. But in 3.8, we will have Microtech. Uh, but New Babbage itself won't be available as, a, as, a, as in, in, internally. Yeah. It will be there externally. And then in 3.9, the, the full of New Babbage will all be there the where you can go and yep. visit the various areas of it. Uh, and now I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about the spaceport here just to. Well, he's got to make his call first, but okay. we'll see if it well, the I VoIP think, works. I, I think the VoIP thing, unless they restarted the server, yeah. I don't know. The service is down. All right. <laughs> So the contact says, meet me in the garage area. Yeah. We're, we're trying to show group gameplay. Yeah. But, uh, the, the VoIP service, which is what sends the, the voice and also the animation face data, is being really finicky on our server here. So, so as Chris mentioned, um, New Babbage is going to be our first landed zone where we're not building it in the utilitarian art style. Uh, previously, we've made things like outposts. Uh, in the high-tech art style, but this is our first opportunity to build a landing zone from scratch. So what you're seeing here is a 
a kind of a glimpse at what the inside of uh, New Babbage uh, will feel like. And I think we get to New Babbage via that hyperloop. Like if you look, Glenn, yeah. if you look in the yes. that, those yes. those lines you see there are the the hyperloop, right? Yes, it, gets, yes. it gets to the New Babbage, which has all these different uh, various either living areas or um, shop areas, the domes. Tina, like uh, Microtech. Yes, uh, the greeter. Greeter. Here's a funny joke. What do you call a mobile with computational needs that is completely made out of helium? Moby Dad. Can I help you with anything else? <laughs> are there more jokes? I think there are, yeah. <laughs> I have a joke for you. Which standard Earth moth has 28 base mates? All of them. Yes. Yep. All right, let's go. Thank you, you can one. thank uh, Dave Haddock and the writing team for that, right? Yeah, thanks, Dave. <laughs> All right, the it was nice chatting with you. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your visit. Okay, so let's uh, prepare to meet up with Rob and uh, get our fake ID and uh, lab coat. This is how you would access the garages that we have so you can drive around the city and drive around the planet. Ah, over here. Right. Yeah. Happy to find anything you're after. Just over there. Ooh, <laughs> over there. <laughs> All right, let's get a lab coat. So uh, it's early days yet, but the idea is uh, that all the outfits, like the cloth outfits you have, will be physicalized. We'll have some stuff we'll show them later. So we have the sort of new cloth stuff that I think we've shown uh, in early days before, but you'll be able to take your jacket off, drop it on the ground, it will crumple on the ground, wave it around. Um, and so we're, we're moving towards having everything physicalized. So if you're flying somewhere, and you'll see this why it makes a, a why it's important in the evening demo, is you know make sure you're equipping yourself correctly. Yes. If you got the right clothes, uh, the right uh, suits, armor, and we're also going to be very focused on giving you positive and negative reasons. So like if you have a big armored suit, that's not something you can sit down and say fly a fighter with or something. Correct. But it may be what you need outside to survive a hostile environment. So um, we, we grabbed the chip already. Yep. So we got the chip. Yep. Uh, okay. Let's uh, let's head up and get on the uh, worker shuttle to the Microtech uh, research facility. And this is a, this is sort of an example of a longer-term, multi-stage mission. Not in 3A, but later on, yes. that we're building. Uh, that so there will be challenges that are sort of you versus you know AI, environmental challenges versus just also the general you know. PvP emergent gameplay that can happen. Okay, hopefully that works. Oh, all right, we're approved. Same with elevators, the world over. Just wait for them. <laughs> Home of the Moby Glass. And, uh, okay, see? No, no more of those, the silly button with yeah. the interaction on. You're actually interacting straight with panels. That is, again, as Todd was saying, part of what the building block UI is going to allow us to embed UI and interactions much easier in the, in the game. So we're up on the, the rooftop shuttle area.
And so one thing that we'll get into later, but we have the player status system is now extending beyond oxygen into temperature. As you can see that it's cold. I don't know if you noticed, but we are actually have breath coming out of our mouth. Did not work. Um, And so if you want to look around your uh, we can third person, we can sort of see you breathing, I guess. So d another big thing that was just seen. <coughs> need to get that. Can we get the quadrant? All right. And by the way, Glenn is uh, actually on a AI flown ship here. So. And that is something longer term that we're, we're going to be working on, which is AI doing things like taking your shuttle from a space station down to the ground or various locations that you could go to without having to fly to yourself. So think of it as a bigger version of the transit system. And here's one of the things that, that you know I think Ian's talked about, we've talked about is that we want to increase our range of, you know, we have outposts but they're pretty small. Correct. And we want to have points of interest that you would have in various planets or moons yeah. that you can have mission content in, things to do. Uh, and this is sort of an iterate, this is a sort of first prototype of that. Yeah, so, so um, basically multiple entries, multiple exits. Um, obviously with outposts, you got one way in, one way out. Uh, so for us, um, from a design standpoint, you know, this allows us to build these in a modular way so that we can have different entrances, different exits, different room layouts, different mission content associated with it. Uh, from there, you know, then we start looking towards towns and villages. And then obviously we have our, our main cities. Yeah, and, and as I mentioned earlier, this is sort of a prototype first version of a sort of multi-part mission uh, that we've discussed and yeah. thinking about doing uh, in the longer term, not 3.8 obviously, but 3.9 or on beyond that. Of course, it's cold here in Microtech. So you'll see, now that we've entered into the room, the, the temperature that the character feels changes and he actually starts returning back to normal. Trusty ID card still works. I'm willing to say it does. <laughs> <laughs> and then we take a look out the side, glance out the window a bit. When you uh, out the window out here. So one other thing, which we're going to get into a little further, but if we actually take a look outside. Um, so uh, the other thing that we're showing here is dynamic weather. Yes. Uh, and so actually there is a, uh, a ground snowstorm blowing in. Can you look out the window a little bit, Glenn? Or not? Glenn? Glenn, can you, you look out the window? window? Just take a look out the window so quickly. So if you take a look, if we go take a look out here, it's where the trees go to the left a little bit. Should be, I think. Yeah, so you can see. So. All right, we carry on. So there's a storm blowing in right now. Come to that in a, a bit better. But uh, the, weather sim the, we the weather simulation uh, takes into account uh, the humidity, yes. the wind, uh, temperature. Yes, right? all of that. And, and, it, and it is dynamic. So it's set up. So not going to have. We've got a couple elements still to come on the fully, fully dynamic planetary weather, uh, which would be volumetric uh, planetary crowds and uh, volumetric ground fog. We have a large amount of the pieces in place 
uh, for our weather sims, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but let's carry on with our, our mission. So we're, gonna, so we're gonna go look for the uh, data center to try and steal the algorithm. So it, it says it in the, the demo, or basically in the um, mission briefing, that you're looking for server number five. So we'll, we'll be looking around and getting closer and working our way over there. And try not to be too conspicuous. <laughs> And the idea with these kind of missions in the longer term is to you know, have the ability to do like stealth gameplay instead exactly. of combat gameplay, so, uh, solve some puzzles. Yes. So it's not just going to be about shooting people all the time. Well, uh, and it's something that Tony and you and I have talked about a long time yeah. ago, which is basically breadcrumbs as well. So it yeah. opens up to other aspects. So we want a sort of combination of sort of the procedural dynamic stuff that would be yes. generated by the universe simulation that Tony was showing earlier plus some more crafted, multi-stage, kind of more narrative missions. Yep. And it, they all get mixed in to give you a, a really sort of nice flavor and variety of things to do. So it's like we need to figure out a good way. We're going to show, we, we kind of know a good way, yep. but as a game player, you would actually have to suss this out. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go back here in the maintenance area. Great. Very quiet, great. Yes. <laughs> In the future, obviously, the AI will have certain stims that they can react to. Um, and, you know, audio is one of them. Having certain objects that the pl player places around would be another way to distract AI. Again, there was things like we took the, uh, Glenn's going to take his uh, paw, there's the like locks on the yeah. multi-tool, and uh, we can pretend we're going to pour them off, or not. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but yeah, this is, the idea is, you know, like the, the FPS, like the, the multi-tool has different modes, cutting, could welding. be mining, yeah. could be welding, repairing. In this particular case, we're just going to cut the four. Um, kind of hinges, locks off, so we can take the gray open and get through it. And again, this is, you know, I think we've talked a little bit about, you know, especially with something like whether the weather or the temperature, it's about taking, like, the physical inventory, taking the things you need. Taking so do I need a tool to go and do something? Do I need to have uh, an outfit that will keep me warm or, Correct. or you know, protect me from fire? I mean, I think w even with our combat and everything like that, we want people to actually think about what they need to do first. Are you, are you looking for the exit? No, he's looking how to turn that off. No, 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 you, it's on the bottom here. Go down here, there. See that square? Move your cursor down. Oh, can you tap to it? Your mouse isn't working? Yeah. I. Yeah, I. Oh. All right, Glenn's managed to crash. That can't be right, right? Come out, do that, that's one way. There we go. Okay, well done. So, 
that the, that's the you know the, as you guys know, there's an inventory. There's a personal inner thought system, yes. which is uh, Richard is the personal inner thought with three eight or three nine, three nine. So the personal so yeah, that's sort of work in progress. But the personal inner thought is in three nine, which allows you to access a whole bunch of uh, sort of uh, actions or interactions that are sort of on you or would be your thoughts. Uh, and so that's a very early version that obviously for some reason is bugged, but we weren't actually meant to end up triggering that. So we're looking for a, a data card. And we're going to steal some data. Oh, there's a guard on that side. Just make sure you well, stay out of that way, Glenn. There you go. Okay, come over here. There we go. Take the data card. You can take that one, or I think he's going to he clocked one on the desk, I think. Okay. That was risky. Be quick. All right. Pack, pack, pack. There we go. And then maybe under here to get the other side. By the way, one of the reasons why oh, yeah, there we go. One of the reasons obviously why Microtech they like this planet and it being cold is to essentially cool all their uh, you know, the server systems farms. And server farms, yeah. Yes. It's like a big Microsoft. All right, let's uh, let's try to get some data. And again, this is building block UI, right? Yes. So yes. that's all put together by a designer fairly quickly without having to have flash programmers or. Okay. Let's get it. Okay. Let's get out of here with our ill gotten gains. Go that way. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, all right. I don't know. This looks all right. Ooh. All right, Glenn. Just pretend that you're blending in. Jeez, <laughs> that was close. <laughs> you know, let's put it on top of his. Okay. Oops, a daisy. I think we better get out of here, Glenn. Yeah.
so uh, we have non-lethal takedowns now. Yeah, let's get out. Yeah, it's part of that. So melee combat does ship yes. with 3.8. Yes. And it's a lot more than just that. But it's non-lethal takedowns. You'll be able to fight. To, to knock people out. Knock people out. Um, get into uh, sister cuffs. There's a whole sort of different levels of punch, left, right, block, left, right. It's all actually physically based. Uh, so we've grabbed something kind of warm, but we're not really ready to it. We've actually stashed uh, a getaway yeah. environment suit. And Richard, uh, Trier, I want to bring up to the stage. So Richard's uh, the lead designer on our actor feature team. And I'd like him to talk a little about what is happening right here. And the beginning of the actor status system that will ship in 3.9. So what you're seeing here is basically an extension of the room system. And the room system contains temperature, wind speed, humidity, and it basically amalgamates all of that into what you're seeing on the HUD at the moment, which is the apparent temperature. So the apparent temperature actually comes in and is part of our player status system. And the player status system is where you start to feel these environments, and the actual environments start to play into the gameplay. So you can see here that actually the physicalized wind, he's actually leaning into the wind. He's putting his hand up to try and shield himself but he's not wearing the correct attire. So he's not wearing the correct equipment because he's just basically grabbed the clothes and jumped outside. And as you can see, it's really cold. So he's starting to shiver. A bottom side here, it is. Yeah, it's like minus, uh, minus 120 degrees Celsius. So obviously, you can only survive at like at least two, three minutes in that temperature. So he's actually starting to undergo hypothermia which is part of our status effects. And hypothermia actually ties into the gameplay. So his heart starts to raise, his stamina starts to decrease. He starts to actually physically start to see, his, the, the, you'll see a whiteout. So he starts to become more sensitive to the light. And his audio will start to come in as well. To actually really sell that your body is shutting down. And the player status system really, it just incorporates multiple different things. So hypothermia is part of the temperature gameplay and you're seeing the cold aspect here. But eventually that will be for heat as well as other actor status as well. But you can see here, it's starting to see the other value on here that you see is the apparent temperature, but the other value is the body temperature. Now the body temperature is tracking your internal body. So, and I think, it's, what is it down by now? It's like yeah. down at like minus, no, we, 33 degrees We forgot Celsius. to put the drop shadow on the, yeah. the thing. And so we're not in this suit. We actually have a suit that we stashed in the cave, which we're looking for. The other thing uh, that you may have noticed if, when Glenn was going to the third person view, uh, but we have, uh, we're working on environmental shader effects. So there is actually, there was snow accumulation on the jacket that he wore. You notice, you go back and look at what it was when he got it and what it is now. Uh, and with that accumulation is meant to be for things like snow, rain, dust, dirt, uh, and that's something that we're looking to have in in 3.9. And so you really that, feel that the environment. The biome, the, the basically your environment. So yes. and yeah. it'll build up over time. Build up. So we better get a warm suit on because otherwise we're going to essentially pass out and then so die. So this suit is actually cold. So hopefully when Glenn puts it on, you'll see actually that the, it's actually frosted. So you can see your actor's actually shivering here as he's putting it on. And this suit is, is more as the Caldera suit that we revealed in the character archetype talk. And this is a, an environment suit that's built for these extreme climates. He's really cold. He's really cold. So you'll see the visors frosted up. You can see, and it'll, this is like yeah. getting into your car when it's frozen. It's, it's frozen, and you've, the visor's actually frosted up, your suit's frosted up. And as your suit kicks in, this suit has an operating range that can actually survive these temperatures. So yeah, and if we go, yeah, and, and you'll see it now because the same effects that we saw on the windshield, you definitely see yeah. so in uh, like your car. So our visor, you, you're going to see because it's a big snow, winter storm, snow, slush that's going to, that's warm in here as it's going out though, it's going to start to get slush. And what we're going to see is uh, lesser, is tough. And then I think the other person that I'd like to bring up is Mike Snowden, who is the director of our visual effects. And his team is being responsible for all the environmental weather effects here. And this is what we're doing on the snow side, but it, the same could work in you know, a desert planet for dust, rain, 
And we've actually prototyped a lot of this stuff outside snow, but you're seeing the snow has been our, uh, thing, uh, our first example. So That's I don't know if you want right. to talk about some of the stuff. Yeah, I mean, so this is all, the, the main thing about these effects is they're completely uh, data driven. So we put a lot of time into creating these rule sets. The, the way that we author the effects is completely different to anything we've done before, because we know that we can make beautiful looking storm effects, but the really cool thing about this, no pun intended, is that it, it's literally the data that the planet gives us, so this ties in with the Planet Tech V4, yeah. which obviously we're, we're showing off today. Uh, it ties in with all the active status stuff, so it's like bringing everything together. So it, it, they look fantastic, but they're completely driven by what the game data is. Yeah, the temperature, altitude, humidity, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and so it's systemic and it's yeah. I mean, and, and it'll be affected by time of day and other things. Absolutely, so yeah. I mean, so the rule sets are things like temperature, even elevation, wind strength, wind direction, even angle. There's a lot of complexity in the rule set that makes it really easy, actually, for us in the long term to, to make yeah. the effects across all the kind of hundreds of planets that will eventually. Yeah, be, be exactly. Created. And you know, obviously, you can see the effect of the winds on the vegetation. Yeah. Yep. And as you see here, we're in fog, you see the snow, our visor is getting, you know, it's like you would be, you know, in a snowstorm if Absolutely. you're skiing or out there. So we, 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 we stashed a suit, we actually had a rover that we've stashed that yeah. goes in our carrack, so, um, we're looking for one, right now. One of the things before we go on too far, the other thing is with the armors, you will run into planets that are outside your temperature range. And uh, so you might last there for 15 minutes, but Obviously, we want to make sure that it's very lucrative for you to be able to, you know, go in there and, and risk reward uh, gameplay for it. Yeah, so be equipped. That's why you'd have a big ship and and buy different armor and store it. Okay, so here's our rover, uh, which we hidden with the little top, and uh, this is going to be a much more larger example of the, the cloth cost, interaction yeah. system. So, all right, Glenn, let's get the top off and get into the rover. Okay, we, we can drop it now. <laughs> <laughs> and again, that's an example of all the physics stuff coming together, the cloth interacting, the wind's blowing it. Uh, and the wind itself here, uh, one thing I wanted to call out is that the wind is different strengths depending on where you are. So if you're down in the tree line or in the troughs, the wind is actually is a lot slower. And then as you get more exposed, that wind comes out. So it really is a, a dynamic, dynamic environment. And as you see, as we get into here now, the temperatures come up, the water the water is evaporating from our visor, and we have a clearer view. Mm -hmm. But of course, the outside of the, the, the rover now will have the effect on its canopy. Yep. All right, let's let, let's let um, Sam know that she needs to pick us up. Well, after we've engaged this. go-to setup because the go-to's break the, the dialogue system. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need a pickup. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need a pickup down the bottom of the hill. On my way. Okay. Hey, got it. We actually, the, the that breaks in our system because we we have a little background well, it's zoom to the right place, which doesn't doesn't actually do the server it has a stream check down. right. So it hasn't streamed, and it is actually you are seeing some of the stuff because this is in server OCS, so we don't have everything all the time now. So when things go in and out, we still got edge cases, and that's one of the issues that we we have to fix before server OCS happens. But it'll be fine. Let's. Also, this is precarious, so make sure you get a little yeah. noisy for Glenn. Oh. oh. All right. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. 
come in. You can see the fog starting to thin out now as we're going further down. That's yeah, yeah. So, again. like as we're further down, it's not quite as thick. The the the, uh, the weather is not quite as intense. I, I know. It's, it's scaring the shit out of me. Show off, Glenn. Hey. Good job, Glenn. Yeah. yeah. I remember when it was almost impossible to get a rotor yeah. into a ship, but now we can do it. It's yeah. great. Here's an example of, so we're talking about storage. Uh, so these are actually meant to be for suit storage. Still kind of early days on the stuff, so it's a bit wonky, but we put our suit in there. We need it. So the idea is that you would have suits and stuff that you would store depending on what you would need uh, on different planets. that and I think someone's shooting us from behind. Yeah I got a pretty hefty time start we're gonna have to get out of here. We're being tailed. Get to the turret. This is our, our first iteration of ship AI in atmosphere. In atmosphere, yeah, yeah. So we are being tailed by Microtech security because they figured out that we've stolen the data and yeah. we're making a getaway. There we go. All right, come on to our little turret. Hey, Sam, here. what do you bank? All right, one more. 
Okay, come on, let's get him. Okay, last one. Okay, have we got one more, right? Yep. No, there's one more. Here he is. Yeah. Sam's basically flying the ship to try and give Glenn a good shot. All right. Come on, get him. Probably not. Yeah, you can actually see a snowstorm in the distance there in the background as we're leaving. That was where we came from. Do we have to, do we have to kill them all to advance? Yeah, I can punch it. Okay, come on, Glenn. No pressure. Joe, take him out. Come on. Did it take us this long? I don't remember. Oh, Get out of here, Sam. Here we had our mission update. Uh, we get it later. Okay. Get out of orbit then. Ah. <laughs> it's kind of when we run these run-throughs, it did not take. That was the no, longest uh, it's taken. Yeah. I, I, it was uh, it's a bit Good nervous AI. on that one. Yeah. Sideways, Glenn. It's kind of cool too. Just, just go to the sort of side and around. Glenn. Yeah, side. He's, he's got it. He, he, yeah. he heard me. See the view. Microtech's very pretty. All right. <sighs> when do we get the mission update? Yeah, you can see that fight. Those are trees down there, those dots. It's, oh, that's cool. So is, uh, okay, so now we're going to QT, right? Yeah. Okay, let's get it. Let's get going. She's having trouble with the HUD. No, with the what? It's She's having trouble with the HUD. Oh, okay. Just get up, get up, and then. Yeah. No, no. Get out of atmosphere. It should yeah. help. It says flight systems damaged. <laughs> right, but the ah, yeah. the attenuated panel. Oh, what's happened on that one? Sam, can you hit B and do it? Hmm? Can you hit B and do it? Uh, yeah, I think I can find it with B, hopefully. Okay. 
we go. I don't know what that happened. Whole, that, I'm going to get the nav. Yeah. nav it's fucking that whole thing drives me nuts. Okay. the mission now to go to Paris? It should be. should be coming. Okay. It went to come. <laughs> you don't need to rush, by the way, Glenn. But yeah. Right, so, should we get the mission? Hey, Glenn, can you check your um, mission status? You should have had the, mission, the update for where they were. I, I, I'm not sure if you saw it. Yeah, delivered to Ruin Station. There you go. So, I thought, yeah, I totally had the update of the mission. I guess we just missed yeah. it. Anyway, we got, we, got, we got the data. We've now told where we've got to go. We've got to go to Ruin Station in... There we go. So here we go. Go, go exterior, Glenn, exterior, there you go, show it off, there you go. And this is in the uh, volumetric cloud, the yes. space cloud tech that we have. Same stuff that we're using for Squadron 42 for the coil. But as, uh, as you can see, use of usable everywhere else. It's completely volumetric layer, and it's beautiful. Okay. And here we're, so we're at the jump point um, to uh, the pyro system. Now, you don't necessarily need infrastructure for jump points, but the more traveled ones are the ones that used to be traveled, which Paro used to be, but not, not particularly anymore, have uh, what we call jump rings around them. And they help stabilize the jump point to make for a smoother jump. If you don't have one, then it's more difficult. And the entrance is harder or difficult. But sometimes you may want to try a sort of side jump point to get into a system, like if you're a smuggler, because the main ones would be more, uh, you know, essentially they are like a checkpoint. It's like going through a border a port. patrol or it, something. It, it, it is basically a port. So when we're building the solar system, one of the things that we think about it are entrances for um, obviously economy reasons, and you saw that with Tony Z's talk, of way to interject new things into the solar system. Um, so around, uh, around the Stanton jump points, the three major ones, uh, we will have uh, space stations, you know, so that you can go and travel and let's say you had a long jump point and Want to stop and stop and uh, basically drop something off there, you or can. refuel, or, or refuel, yeah, exactly. or do whatever you need to do. Um, so th we will have space stations around those jump points that you can go and interact with. Now, obviously, when you go into a little bit more lawless system, uh, I don't want to say like building a wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, in the case of Pyro, it used to be a uh, regulated system yes. that's. That, that once they strip mined it out, no one goes there anymore, and it's fallen uh, sort of into a lawless state. Yes. And uh, so this is not really a well, this isn't a very tr often traveled uh, uh, jump point, but we're going to take it because that's where we have to go to uh, head to Paris Station. So as you can see, the uh, jump ring, which is de delineating where the point is off in the distance, and uh, Sam is going to line itself up um, for us to jump to Pyro system. And this is, this is essentially sort of the infrastructure you occasionally would, you know, you can have around, you can, some places would have bigger stations. Um, 
but as I said, the Pyro route isn't a very particularly well-traveled one. But also with this, I guess with the cloud tech, you see the possibilities of us going in and mining that, um, and then it f affecting your radar, it being booby traps, all these kind of gameplay possibilities, I feel, open up um, with these unique points of interest. Yes. I think we should go. <laughs> Let's do it. That's actually a super cool view. You see that one? Oh, yeah. Very, how good that is. That looks awesome. Yeah. Really cool. Okay. So, going through a wormhole is a little bit like riding the rapids. You don't really have much, uh, you have la lateral control, but it's a little it's bit of forward, but you've been pushed on a current, yeah. and you've got to keep inside uh, the boundaries of the wormhole. And actually, if Sam gets a little close, you'll sort of see interference on his screens. And of course, Stanton's just going away in the background, and Farah's coming in here. Yeah, and, and you can see there's actually a current that we put in the in the w wormholes, and you sort of see the particles that are giving you the idea of where the center line current is. And you have to anticipate to keep on the course, because if you don't, and you go off and you go into the boundaries of the wormhole, you could end up just being spat out in just space in the middle of nowhere, or severely damaged. So, we are now in the payro system and we streamed out Stanton while we were, while, as we were traveling and streamed in payro. The, the other side, by the way, has got an awesome yeah. light on the side, yeah. Is that a route to, to, to the ruin station, Sam? There we oh, go. There we go. <laughs> Ready? All right, Ian. Hit it. Good job. 